We so are. welcome to uh, Happy Hour with Liz and Heather. Um, you know that you know it's really, really, really exciting, Liz. What? Next month is our two-year anniversary of Happy Hour. Congratulations, oh, you guys! Yay. That's a big deal. That feels is like a, a special deal. toast. I know we're going to have to do something super special um, for it. So I'm really excited I, about that. Well, I might even have to do more than just what I'm calling my upper wear. So that's what I was just. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to visualize that, Liz. But you know, <laughs> it's what we're all doing. Come on, we get dressed from here up for our Zoom meetings, and all then right, I want a show of hands in the chat. I know we don't have hands in the chat. <laughs> I don't think, but I want to know upperwear? how many people are wearing. You can just say, "Are you wearing?" Pajama pants, sweatpants, <laughs> yes. shorts, or even your skivvies. I want to know. So, and we won't tell anyone. It's all going to stay here in the happy hour. Oh, okay. So, I'll and go for it. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I have pajama <laughs> pants on, and I'm sorry. I'm going to say that right now. I have We're jeans on. I'll let. So, we've got dress pants, pants, thankfully. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We have George who said... He's wearing real clothes. Holly's wearing pajamas. She's with me. She's on team pajamas. Dress pants. There you go, Holly. Pants. Yep. Okay. And Anne is wearing, she's barefoot like me. I'm barefoot too. I have no shoes <laughs> on. And here's another secret that I'm going to share with the whole world. I actually have a foot massager under my desk. Oh, very nice. <laughs> and it has heat. And so when, wow. yeah, it's like one of those little indulgences that I at one point thought I absolutely had to have in my life. Get a blanket and, and it's practically bed, right? <laughs> oh, the new work from home environment, that's for sure, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Liz, Liz and I are veterans of work from home. We've been working from home for a really long time. So right. <laughs> this is kind of the same, but kind of not. Oh, great. I love it. I love it. All right. So we're super excited to have Todd. The other thing that, that you guys may not know is that Todd and I are actually really good friends. We go back a long time. Like Todd and I have known each other for a really long time. And he actually was pivotal in my change in direction in my career. He was one of the champions for me when I started presenting and speaking and he said, you can do this. And um, was, has, he's just been one of my favorite people, Todd. So huge thank you to you. Oh, that's so lovely. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, well I, thank you. I can't take all the credit, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe 2%, Heather, but you've, you've no. been fun watching you grow and blossom. And then, uh, especially watching what you and Liz have put together. It's been, it's been a very fun journey and we wish you many more years of success with it. Well, thank you. And I'm very, I value your friendship very much, Todd. So I'm super excited to have you here with us, um, from the bottom of my heart. So, all well, right. Thank you for having us. Okay, so uh, I'm Heather Satterly. Since I've been gushing to everybody, I might as well continue to gush. I'm Heather Satterly uh, with Satterly Training and Consulting and Back Office Ally, and I'm located in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Um, Liz and I met because we both have a love for accounting technology, and we were geeking out all the time and decided that we should geek out with more than just the two of us, so that's how Happy Hour was born. So uh, I have been, since I started my practice back in uh, 2017, which was another nice little nudge from Todd Robinson there. Um, uh, I have been completely remote. So my practice is a hundred percent remote. I love it. Liz. That's fantastic. Yes. A hundred percent remote. And I love what I do. Yep. So serving small businesses and in a QuickBooks capacity, anything that's revolving around the QuickBooks ecosystem you know, that's definitely a, a area that I dive into and I am an app enthusiast. So just like Heather said, we got together and geeked out. We did. We still geek out <laughs> regularly. regularly. Well, now we do it in front of other people. <laughs> yes, that's right. And I can't, this episode is getting me very, very excited. Yeah, me so. too. Yeah, so um, let's, uh, let's continue on. Um, thank you to our champagne sponsor, Right Networks, the leading cloud hosting provider for accounting professionals. Um, we had, we've done a lot with them this year and they've been a great partner to us. So huge thank you to them for making Happy Hour possible. And then a huge thank you to Vic AI. Um, so excited to hear about what you guys are doing now and what you're, what's coming up as well. So, um, and just uh, an introduction of Todd. I've kind of introduced you um, a little bit. Uh, Todd's amazing. He worked for Intuit. 
Um, you also worked for XCM, um, Workflow Management, and you worked before that with Thomson Reuters? Right, I was, at, I was with Thompson Reuters for about 10 years and then transitioned over to Intuit for about three, which is where we connected, you know, mm -hmm. Intuit put me in charge of that project in Rhode Island. So That's we right. spent a lot of time together, you know, some people might recall the CPA IPA beer that Intuit brewed and that we handed out to uh, practitioners in Rhode Island. So that is so, uh, yeah, you know, I've been in the industry for 16 years. Uh, I've been in the software industry for a lot longer, so I like to say I know a little about a lot when it comes to technology and how it can help practitioners and accounting professionals achieve as much efficiency as possible. And, you know, there's my family, you know, work from home environment recently. We've been enjoying, uh, my son and I are becoming avid fishermen. So, uh, you know, you got to get out during recess. You got a lake nearby. We go fishing a lot. My daughter's been home from college, obviously, and but we're doing well and getting by, and it's great to be here today. Awesome. And Rachel, um, yes. can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. So I am the head of marketing demand generation at Vic AI. I'm so excited to be a part of this team. Um, we are a small but very energetic startup, um, obviously focused on uh, powering accounts payable uh, through AI. And Todd will get more into that, um, but been part of uh, B2B technology companies for a long time, done everything from video to uh, been part of other AI companies as well, but um, this is just such an exciting space. And um, thank you so much for having us on. Oh, we're so happy to have you with us. So, yeah, are you ready to dive in, Todd? Yeah, let's get going. Uh, I'm going to be your, your Vanna, so just tell me when <laughs> to click. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, and dive right in. And I love this topic. So, Right. Yeah. It's all about the era of intelligent accounting. At least that's what we, uh, you know, uh, uh, like to call it here at Vic AI. And uh, but you could go ahead and advance to the the, the next slide. And um, just to give you guys a quick history about Vic AI and where we um, have come from. Um, you know, again, it's the era of intelligent accounting, and uh, and I'll explain in, in a bit what that really means. Um, and so we can't call ourselves an AI provider without having hundreds of millions of documents and transactions that we could use as training data. Our, our co-founders are from Norway and they've been involved with a number of uh, startups in Norway. One uh, startup in particular was uh, the first cloud accounting ERP solution in the Nordic countries and they acquired uh, our data lake at um, training data as a result of that. And so, you know, any new incoming data from our clients, uh, in essence, we'll create a data lake around that, and we're always going to be scrubbing it against the larger data lake, and in essence, um, we're, we're an AI provider. We, we are headquartered in New York City, uh, obviously, but we've been working from home. Uh, we also have an office over in Oslo, and we're a global company. We've got about uh, almost 30 employees globally across the world from our uh, software developers and engineers to our sales team, our marketing team, and our uh, executives as well. And so um, we acquired our Series A round of funding back in August, um, and we've raised about $17 million. And uh, we really went to market probably about 18 plus months ago, maybe, maybe 20 months now, all things considered. And we've had a lot of success out of the gate, obviously with the transition where the technology's taking us. If you're an early adopter and want to embrace AI, AI like some of the top four uh, or top 10 have done there, uh, plus many more, we've had a lot of success early out of the gate and we're very uh, proud and excited about that. So next slide, please, Banna. Uh, Todd, quick question. You just yeah. used a word that piqued my interest because it's something that I actually have never heard before. You said data lake, like a lake, yeah. like a body of water. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, no, well, kind of, yeah, I think of it as a body of water, or like a large lake, you know, uh, but however, the water is replaced by data, right? And so from an IT perspective, they're going to call it a data lake, and it's just a large set of, of, of data, the 200 million plus financial documents and transactions is what we call our data lake, and that in essence is the brains behind the operation. So any new incoming data, uh, is going to always be scrubbed against that training data or that data lake. 
Gotcha. And then from there is where the machine learning gets applied, and I'll, I'll explain more as we go throughout the presentation. Okay. But but great question. So now now you know you can't you can't call yourselves an AI provider without having a data lake to support it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> You know, but what I've learned is, uh, you know, we, we, we need to really educate the industry on what artificial intelligence and machine learning is all about, right? And you, you can obviously read the Wikipedia, you know, definition there, but I like to break it down to something a bit more common, right? And so if we think about the Hollywood portrayal of AI and machine learning, like Heather's background with, with Iron Man, and, and, and what's the brains behind Iron Man, Heather? Right, it's Jarvis, right? Do we know what Jarvis is uh, uh, actually the acronym for? It's just a rather very intelligent system, right? When we think about Skynet and Terminator, and that, that's probably my first recollection. I had no idea that it was AI and machine learning. When I first saw Terminator, it was just a robot, right? You know, But there's so much more behind that, that um, you know, the robot, it's the AI in general. So there's always the Hollywood portrayal of it, but if we think about AI, from an everyday use, it, we're using AI every day, right? Um, you know, if we could do a raise of hands, who has an Alexa in their house? I know I do, right? We all have Siri on our iPhone or your Android or whatever. Um, I'm, I am cut the cable, I'm streaming everything now, right? And so I have Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu, but what those providers do is, that, you know, they monitor, the AI actually monitors and learns from your viewing uh, what you like to view, and it creates patterns to make recommendations on future shows. So next time you log in and you go into one of those applications, you're going to see recommendations on, hey, you might like this movie or you might like this series. That's AI happening behind the scenes. You know, we look at what Watson did winning Jeopardy, right? Or what ways can do to help you get from point A to point B. And, and you know, it's not just helping you get to your destination, but it's also um predicting off of other drivers and issues that those other drivers might be encountering and rerouting you to a faster route that's the ai and that's the machine learning that's actually happening behind the scenes so we use it every day and then the second bullet point there forbes in a recent article just pointed out uh what the top 25 technology trends are going to be that are going to define the next decade right and um guess what number one was well it was ai and machine learning so uh, i hope that helps just with a, a little bit deeper definition into what ai and machine learning actually is right well i think that you said it whenever you were talking about being able to build on information being able to query information you know i, I think that that's the biggest piece of this that is growing at such a fast rate that it's hard to even completely wrap our heads around everything that's happening behind the scenes. Yeah, right, right Liz. I mean, it's a, it's a great point. I mean, this is all kind of at a personal level, but how do we start to break down the AI and the machine learning into the accounting profession, which is what I'm going to kind of start to explain more. We'll take a little bit deeper dive into what Vic AI is actually solving for right now and what our AI platform intends to solve for in the future. So it's, but it's baby steps, right? You just can't, you know, we, we could go down the path of like, let's build out this entire AI platform that's gonna solve for 80 to 90% of everything bookkeepers do behind the scenes. Well, we can't do that. We have to start with baby steps and I'll explain that further here in a, in a few more slides. Great. All right, we can move on. Did we lose Heather? You didn't. So okay, okay work from home <laughs> problem. Here we are. <laughs> I have two cats. Yes, totally understand. I have an office. So I do cat. want to explain what the area of intelligent accounting actually is. And uh, sorry, the um, at least what we're calling it. And so I'm just going to kind of focus on the last decade and the current decade in front of us. You know, the last decade was all about the digital accounting. Uh, you know, decade. It was, you know, there, it's, there was a lot of automation, but that automation came to us in, in the form of maybe like an OCR scan and fill capability, or, you know, maybe building rules around uh, certain processes. And we all know what happens, you know, with that um, technology. It's been good, but it's, it's quickly becoming outdated, right? And the rules would break and you'd have to go in and rebuild them. And, you know, that was automation. But if we think about where the next decade of technology has taken us, 
AI and machine learning is really that next level. Um, and so, um, you know, there's going to be even greater automation and efficiency as a result of that. And so, you know, if you think about what terms that we're familiar with the most, like the digital transformation, or we're now entering into the fourth industrial revolution, we're calling it the era of intelligent accounting. All right, next slide, please. All right, so um, I do want to explain a little bit about what we're solving for now and what we are actually attempting to build out. And so we're going to become the profession's first true AI accountant. And um, we're solving for helping to automate the AP, the accounts payable process, right now. I'm not talking about the actual bill pay part because we're going to leave that up to strategic partners of ours like Bill.com to handle that. We just want to get that invoice or that, train, you know, that document into the Vic AI platform where the AI can process it and allocate it accordingly and help reduce the amount of time that it takes to do that. Eventually, we're going to launch our cost. Uh, processing module, which is going to handle the credit card and bank reconciliation. That's matching up those receipts and those expenses with those, those statements and those transactions. Eventually, we'll move up to the revenue row and be able to solve for everything related to revenues. And eventually, we'll move up to the adjustment and close process. So what you guys are actually witnessing here is what's going to become probably the industry's first true AI accountant. Again, kind of referring back to that data lake, um, you know, the only human component or element is going to fall back on the practitioner's side to actually go in and review the, the data that we flag for review, which is where maybe the AI uh, or the confidence scores of the data that we're analyzing came back below a certain threshold. So the review or the human element is going to fall on, on you guys, uh, but we're going to help automate as much of that as possible. So we'll solve for AP now. Uh, and eventually we're going to continue to build out the platform that's going to solve for so much more. We can move on. Well, I'm really glad that you're you're sharing this because you know a lot of people have heard the Vic AI name, but being able to explain some of the, you know, where you're who you are and where you're going is so helpful. Yeah, right. I mean, it's um, you know, our goal is to become a true AI platform where we want to price solve for about 80 to 90 percent i say 80 90 percent of behind the scenes or the back office work right you know it's um and that's just going to give you guys a lot more time back to become better advisors and consultants to your client and really focus where the higher generating revenue lies right and you know the fact of the matter is um especially in today's um crisis in this work from home environment and quarantine and whatnot um and even going forward because that's the direction that technology is taking us we're going to have to do more work with less right and and that's a fact we already know that and the the more work is referring to technology with less people or resources now i'm not saying ai and machine learning is going to replace people it's going to help you expand and grow and scale with the people that you have in place right? The number one trend in the accounting profession is people and your resources and the turnover and constantly trying to find people to help you better manage your business and your clients and that sort of thing. So we're going we're, we're gonna to be forced into doing more with less. And that's going to be definitely a technology component, um, AI platform like ours, that's going to be able to help you with your people and your processes and free up more time in a day. And this is a great example. So I'm gonna to start to kind of dig a little bit deeper into the manual AP process here. Our clients have come back and shared with us, on average, it takes them about 10 to 12 minutes to manually process an invoice from first receiving that invoice and doing the intake and getting it into whatever system that you have to get it into. Maybe you gotta scan it or upload it or whatever. And then there's the manual review process and the coding and the allocation of all that data. And then obviously towards the bottom part there, getting it posted correctly and ultimately pushed over and, and uh, where the invoice is going to get approved by that business owner. And then the checks either going to get written and then mailed and, and ultimately the vendor gets paid. And, you know, we just repeat that cycle. It takes 10 to 12 minutes on average, right, to manually process an invoice. Now, some 
you know, practitioners have told me, well, I can do that a lot quicker. It actually takes me more time. I think it depends on the client. So case by case, invoice by invoice. If there's a lot of allocations or if things need to be split out in the maybe multiple locations or something like that, it's going to take longer. But for the most part, I think in, in agreement, everybody would say, yes, the AP process is pretty manual, right? And there's a lot of steps involved with that. I think, I think everybody would hopefully agree with that, right? So let's see what a let, let's see what the next slide what that looks like in a Vic AI world, and what we're looking to eliminate. And again, by leveraging the AI platform, um, you know we still have to do the intake of that invoice and get it into the um, Vic AI platform, where our AI engine's going to you know code it and process it and post it to the right GL account. We even have an approval process within in Vic. Um, and then ultimately pushed over to an application like Bill.com for that business owner, um, you know, to get paid. So the goal is to obviously eliminate and automate even um, a majority of those steps. And what we've been able to do is reduce what we know normally takes 10 to 12 minutes to process per invoice, reduce that down to like 30 to 60 seconds per invoice, right? And so that's the power of AI and that's the power of technology in the direction that this has taken us in and what we're really looking to solve. So we're doing this with AP now. We're going to eventually do this with the bank and credit card reconciliation part and, and a lot more of your day-to-day -day processes behind the scenes. Todd, I have a question from Don. He's saying, I work with a client that buys many things from Amazon. There's a wide variety of categories, example, repairs and maintenance, products to resell, tools, packaging materials. How can AI handle this? Yeah, so great question, Don. I mean, and I think probably what you're partially referring to, and if I get this correct, I think is some of the dimensional accounting. You know, I mean, when we start to, when we go beyond that header on the invoice and we start to look at it line item by line item, which Vic AI can extract, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of that here shortly when we log into the demo. We get into some of the dimensional accounting, could be multiple locations, departments, cost centers, and things like that. Um, eventually, we're gonna be able to solve for all of that, right? And so, again, case by case and client by client, it depends on what the needs are and how much of that data on that invoice we'll be able to capture immediately. We might have to put do some additional like AI mapping uh, behind the scenes. Uh, for the ingestion of that invoice. And then there's always, uh, once we go beyond the AI, there's also the machine learning component where you're going to be able to log into our user interface. We designed it very intuitively. You're going to be able to find those areas that need to be reviewed. In some cases, you might need to add some of the dimensional um, accounting uh, data fields and that sort of thing and make some adjustments. But the system's going to get smarter. That's where the machine learning comes into play. It's going to recognize those changes. And look, a lot of what you guys do on a daily basis is, is repetitive. We start to see the same invoices over and over again. So we're going to recognize those changes in month one. And when month two comes around and we see the same invoice, it's the machine learning is going to kick in and it's going to automatically recognize that change. And, and your confidence scoring and your confidence levels are going to continue to go up. So the, you're going to see more um, greater automation. Um, as we can, as the longer you use the system, basically, if that makes sense. But great question by Don, and I hope that makes sense. Um, I have a quick question too. Um, as far as the machine learning, and I understand that it learns from basically the habits and the behaviors of the accounting firm that's using the platform, right? Um, how they're categorizing. Does it also draw on the greater pool of basically all of your um, customers that are also categorizing, or is it just just for that particular firm or that particular so, business? Right, great question, Heather. So, so a couple of things are gonna happen here. So our data lake's continuing to grow just from the ingestion of all invoices that are flowing into it on a daily basis, right? Um, and so our data lake's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we're gonna build little unique data lakes around individual clients or firms right? Okay. That's going to be unique to their, to their clients. Because again, this is stuff is, is repetitive that we're always going to scrub against the larger data lake. And, and, and in essence, so yes, you are going to be able to kind of leverage for the most part, um, other invoices that are coming in from other, other clients of ours and clients of theirs, right? 
the, the likelihood of us recognizing that invoice um, because we've already seen that invoice that's already in our data lake is a pretty high percentage, right? So it's gonna kind of be a combination of all scenarios. And does it take into account any kind of, you know, accounting rules or principles as well? Like, does it, is it something where um, it's looking at the amount of an invoice and knows based on certain regulations that if an amount is over 2,500 and it's this vendor, I mean, how, how complex and sophisticated is it? So I'll explain that in kind of two ways, I hope to the okay. best of my ability. Majority of the data is going to be assigned a confidence threshold. And I'll, let's just talk about an invoice real quickly, right? And so let's, and let's just say we want that confidence threshold to be 0 0.80. So you can think of that as 80%. If, if the AI looks at that invoice and um, comes back above that confidence threshold, that invoice is most likely captured correctly and it gets marked for okay and there's nothing else that you need to do, right? If it comes back below the confidence threshold of 80%, it's gonna get marked for review. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the AI didn't get the invoice correct. It just means it came back below that confidence threshold and was marked for review and you need to take a look at it, right? And, um, and so what we're attempting to do is capture as much data fields or data as possible above, and get it above the confidence threshold. So a majority of, the, of, of that data is marked okay and there's absolutely nothing else that you need to do. Now, here's the kicker and the bonus. At some point, we're gonna feel confident enough that a majority of data is coming back above that threshold and we're gonna trigger full automation, right? Which means, yes, which is actually what we are, that's our ultimate goal is to get to a full automation where there's nothing that you need to do. You, you're just gonna have confidence in the fact that the AI did its job, everything gets marked okay, and it gets routed accordingly, right? And so that's actually, we're getting very close to some of our initial clients to actually turning on full automation, which is gonna be a really cool day for us. Well, and you know, it's it, like you said, there's the learning that's happening, but I would think that just like in, our experiences that sometimes whenever you get the answer wrong, that that's actually just as valuable as whenever you get it right. In fact, sometimes you learn more so whenever you get it wrong because you're still collecting that data. You're still gathering it and it's still part of your lake. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where, and we just learn off of those changes, right? And so let's say that confidence score comes back at 0 0.60, like 60%. And let's say we did get the invoice number wrong and you went in we're also going to provide predictions, and I'll show that to you. We'll provide predictions based on other data on that invoice that could potentially be that invoice number. Now, in some cases, you might need to just rekey it and type it in yourself, but the, but the platform is going to learn off of that. And most likely, the next month that we see that similar invoice from that same vendor, it's going to capture, and, and the AI is going to get the invoice correct, and it's going to come back above 80%. So you're going to see your automations continue to go up, and you're gonna become more efficient as a result of that. All right, so some good questions. Let's move on and, I, and I'll start to explain what this AP process actually looks like. And then we'll get into a demo because I'm sure you guys want me to pop the hood and we'll look at the engine a little bit, have some awesome. fun with that. But here's what the process looks like. Now, you know, we could provide a client specific email domain like xyzcorp at apmbox.com your clients will give that email domain to their vendors and say, this is where I want all of my invoices to go. And they're gonna automatically flow into the Vic AI engine, which is where we're gonna process the invoice. And then again, like I mentioned earlier, based on the confidence thresholds, it's gonna either get marked okay, and there's nothing else that you need to do, or it's gonna get marked for review where you're gonna log into the user interface, find those areas that need to be reviewed, uh, review them, make any sort of changes that you need, and then accept it and click OK and move on, right? Now, from there, we're going to be able to uh, seamlessly integrate all the data that we've captured over to any of the applications that you see in green there. If it's a, um, like a GL application that we don't integrate with at this time, we have an export to CSV, but we could always get to those other applications and their integrations through like an application like bill.com. So the goal here, again, you guys, is we want to process that invoice and we want to, we want to take what normally we know 
um, takes about 10 to 12 minutes to manually process and reduce that down to 30 or 60 seconds. And so we want to handle that upfront component um, and then ultimately push it over to your, your application of choice to pay the vendor, whether it's an app like bill.com or whether it's online banking, or maybe that business owner still wants to write manual checks. Uh, the, the bill pay portion will, will take place uh, after that. And that's, that's what this really looks like. All right, so I, I'm ready to log in and show you, give you guys a quick demo if you want to see it. Absolutely, that's my favorite part. I like seeing it in action. We got to understand how and what's happening, right. but then we want to see it. Right, right, right. So let me uh, figure out which screen I need to share here. And hopefully I get the right one. Uh, you don't want to see my calendar, that's for sure. All right, I am well, sharing my screen, and you are, are you seeing yes, my uh, login, see right? Yes, you're getting that ready. Yep, well, we actually just see your calendar. I'm sorry? So that's what we're seeing right now is your calendar. We just see your calendar. Well, uh, I want to stop oh, there sharing my, okay, never mind. Now we stop sharing my calendar. Okay, so maybe there's a delay on your end, but now you should be seeing the Vic AI login, right? Yes. Yep. We see it now. Okay, good. So I'm going to log in. So we've actually partnered with Amazon Web Services domestically here in the U.S. And so we're 100% in the cloud. We're a SaaS model. And, um, you know, there's nothing you guys need to worry about backing up or installing or anything along those lines. And um, so it's going to immediately log me into uh, a client. And so here's where I have the ability to switch back and forth from, like, one client to the next. Uh, and quickly get into the, those invoices where I need to go about my um, daily processes, right? And so I'm just basically switching from one client to the next and kind of giving you an example of that. And here's where that specific um, client email domain would reside. And so this is the email that you're going to give to your client to give to their vendors, or maybe on behalf of your client, you could call their vendors and give that to them. Now, they could still... Um, you know, if they're receiving the invoices themselves in, in the mail or maybe the vendors emailing them to, to them, you know, you could in turn educate them on how to route that uh, email with that attachment to this domain, right? Or if they want to email it to you and then you upload it or email it to this domain, it doesn't matter. How, regardless, we want that to be as seamless as possible and we want to get the invoices into the Vic AI platform in the most native format as possible, right? If you're getting paper invoices and you're scanning, we're always going to be subject to the OCR, you know, scanning capabilities. You know, how long that invoice has been sitting there and are there coffee stains on that invoice um, and things like that, that, that might impact um, the AI capture of those invoices. So if we could get it in its most native format as possible, that would be great. So you can see here I have some invoices that are ready uh, for me to review and ready ready to be processed, right? Um, so aside from the invoices flowing in this way, I also have the ability to upload. So I'm gonna uh, go out and I'm gonna grab a couple of um, invoices here like this Nourish invoice, this SHI invoice, and I'm gonna uh, click upload. And you guys actually get a witness in action here, what the AI is doing. So these two invoices are now getting processed through the AI engine. And typically within about 30 to 45 seconds, you're going you're gonna to see um, uh, the processing complete, right? So in the meantime, let's just start to kind of navigate through some of these invoices. Now, I do want to share with you real quickly that we have these keyboard shortcuts. So just by hitting the H key on the keyboard, it takes me into the keyboard shortcuts. And um, anytime that you guys can put down that mouse and stop navigating around that way and clicking here and clicking there, we're going to save you time. So you'll get really used to these keyboard shortcuts and navigating around that. And so now I have the ability to just start tabbing through this invoice. And so here's an example of that invoice number. And you'll notice here that um, I just want to refresh this real quickly and go back into my invoices. And so we have a document view. Now, one thing our co-founders brought over from uh, Norway, and I, it's to my understanding that these are 
European accounting standards that every document, every transaction, regardless of the size um, of the transaction, uh, whether it's a dollar or it's a million dollars, must have a document associated with it. So we've, we've embedded that into our application. You, you, you can't even create an invoice without the document because um, you would be, in essence, bypassing the AI. Um, and so if you notice, none of the invoice numbers here have um, a confidence score or this little graph. So here's the confidence score that I'm referring to. And you'll notice that there's a confidence score graph that's in yellow. So that came back below that confidence threshold of 0 0.80. And this got marked for review. So here's an example. And if I click enter, it's going to zoom in on that area. So it actually got it correct, but it, it you know, marked it probably because of the format, 2018, uh, 08, 14. So which was obviously August 14, 2018. And so uh, I just want to accept that. And then I'm going to continue to move on. And you'll notice how it, um, it's going to make recommendations. Like there's terms, the due date were, was 30 days, so it's going to automatically apply that. And I could start to look at the dollar amount here as well and confirm that. And so we make it very easy for you to navigate around that way. And then here's where we start to um, break down the various line items. And again, just tabbing over, I have the ability to review this. You notice how it highlights it on the document and zooms in on that particular area as well. And then here's where we start to get into some of the dimensional accounting, like the departments, the locations, and the descriptions. So in some cases, you know, if you want to break it down, you can. Everything from the line items are always going to roll up to the subline and then ultimately up to the primary line, right? And so I could continue to, you know, break this down. Now, what we're also doing is all the coding. And we're, the AI is doing its best to also match it up to the appropriate GL account number. And then I have, again, have the ability to just continue to come through here and review this as quickly as possible. Hit escape, navigate back up and hit escape again. And that's what it's doing, right? Now that's interesting now that so those two have not processed yet. So. Well, this might be a Go good ahead. time to ask some questions while it's thinking. Right. So one of the questions that we have is Jim said, well, what about Word or Excel or emailed images? So in my experience, those are all difficult things to be able to parse. So is that on the roadmap? Is that something you can do right now? Or is that? Word, Excel, or email images. Yeah, um, yeah to my understanding in uh, good, great question for me to go back to product management with, but, you know, basically we'll accept all formats. Um, and so it's a matter of um, being able to recognize the data in those various formats that are flowing into the system, right? So um, if it's an image, you know, we're going to capture it. We're going to process it as much as possible to my understanding. Now, again, case by case, you know, there, there, there might be some issues initially with that. Uh, with that image, there might be some things that, you know, from a um, programming or development um, AI modeling that we might have to do kind of behind mm -hmm. the scenes initially. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, it will just obviously learn from that. So that's a good question. But mo we, we do support all formats to my understanding. All right. And then we have another question here that says, um, so are the documents that you're showing, are those actually going to travel along with the integrations. So would this, you know, in a sense, go over to build.com? Would it also go over to QBO? Depending on what your sync direction is, do you get to keep that image? Yeah, so great question. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna, we're gonna keep it. It's gonna reside in uh, the Vic AI platform. But when we do, so you know, when I'm done reviewing this, right? And then I'm ready to select a few of these, I'm gonna then post it as a bill. That's gonna uh, sync and integrate the data over to wherever I want it to go so it's client specific. Whether that's direct to QBO or whether that's direct to bill.com, it will, so all the coding that we've done, we're gonna push over and we're also gonna push that image of that document over to whatever that application might be, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to then go into that application like bill.com and that's where the business owner is gonna be able to go in and, and approve you know, that invoice to get paid and then ultimately the vendor is going to get paid. And the same for QBO. You're always going to have the ability to historically come 
uh, and find that um, that transaction and that document in Vic AI. I wouldn't go as far as calling us a document management or storage. I think of more of a I think more of our platform as a repository. Gotcha. Right. Right. It's a good question, and that's a good answer. So depository. I like that. And then we've got a couple of other questions. I think I'm going to hold off for a second so you can show us a little bit more. But we've got good questions rolling in. Right, right, right. And so um, really, I mean, that's kind of the gist of it. It's a matter of just getting the invoices in here, letting the AI do what it's supposed to do. Um, and then, you know, for the most part, um, you know, once you're done processing it, you're going to um, post it. Uh, and sync it over from there. Now we do have the ability to, you know, trigger some uh, like an approval process. So if I want to do, if I do want to assign like um, an approval process internally in multiple steps um, or multiple approvals, I'll have the ability to do that. Um, and I, you know, Liz, I think you asked the question earlier, maybe Heather did about, um, you know, maybe certain thresholds, like if an invoice or a, it comes in at a specific dollar amount um, or, or over a certain dollar amount, that's going to trigger maybe an automatic approval. So our, our approval processes are going to eventually be AI driven and there will be some analytics behind that. Um, and maybe one reason why you'd want to stay within the platform to, to have the approval process take place within, within VIC. Um, however, we do also have the ability to find launch into my bill.com client here as an example. Uh, we do also have the ability to look at the approvers uh, within bill.com. So it's both applications have open APIs and we will have the ability to, um, you know, trigger the bill.com approvers from uh, Vic when we sync that over. And you can see obviously what's what's been posted, maybe what's been transferred. So there's other key indicators throughout the process to help make you uh, more efficient. But we could support an approval process within Vic, and we could support an approval process within an application uh, like Bill.com. A couple of other things, you know, a lot of times maybe that client's going to send you um, an email that has uh, one PDF attachment, but it has maybe six invoices in it as an example, right? And so we have the ability, um, and I don't know if I have an example here, but if this did have multiple uh, invoices in it, you'd be able to just navigate from one to the next, I'm trying to see if I have an example with multiple pages. So here's a LinkedIn invoice as an example with two pages. And let's just assume that this second page was a different vendor. We do have the ability to split that out. Uh, we also have the ability to merge, right? So, um, you know, if it was maybe a two or three page invoice from the same vendor that came in on a six page PDF and I had to merge those, I'd have the ability to do that. When, whenever we split or whenever we merge, it's going to process it um, all over again through the AI engine, right? So I hear what you're saying. You're saying if there was a batch that came in that wasn't necessarily all linked in, you could split it from here inside the software so you wouldn't have to worry about separating your batch. You probably wouldn't want to do that for a lot of different vendors and bills, but you could do it is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, you're, it's going to, it's going to happen, right? You know, it's yeah. going to, you're going to, you're going to get a, a client that's, you know, every month they, they, they have 10 different, you know, invoices and they scan them all in as one PDF and they email to you and yep. say, here, I need you to process just so you, so you can close out my books. Right. Well, you got to break down each invoice separately, right? And allocated accordingly. This is the manual part of the process that I think is the most time consuming part of it. And then allocating all that data correctly, right? Whether, you know, whether that vendor is ultimately getting paid or not, right? If you think about after the fact accounts payable where you're not even handling the bill pay, the business owner does the bill pay, but you got to allocate all the data off those invoices just for the sake of closing out their books and producing financial statements. Everybody does AP whether they like to think they do it or not. Right? right. You might get that manila folder at the end of the month. that has got a whole bunch of invoices in it. Well, you got to code that and you got to get it allocated into the GL to close out their books and produce their month, their, their financial statements. I think that's where a product like, like Vic AI could help you the most. I agree with you. I mean, you're talking about how to attack those manual laborious tasks and definitely payables is one of those. And so one of our questions that we have that kind of plays into that is you're handling the piece where you're saying, hey, let's automate the 
the bill creation, but then we have Alan who asked, once you've got the bill created, can you send it over to QBO for the bill.com light um, to be the bill pay powered by bill.com? Can you have that workflow happen? And then you would just be able to process your bill payment inside of QBO. And my answer yep. to that is yes. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, we just want to process it, code it, and allocate it correctly, right? Um, and then push it over to whatever application you're going to use after the after that uh, to ultimately pay the vendor, right? Whether you're paying the vendor directly out of QBO, whether you're paying it through online banking, whether you're writing a handwritten check, or whether you're using Bill.com, right? We just want to take over the processing part of it and help make you more efficient there. And we have another question here that's asking about being able to fetch. And my reaction to that is you're really talking about trying to read the data, parse the data, avoid the manual entry piece of the data. And fetching is really not, is that part of your plan or not? So fed, I, I would probably want to dig a little bit deeper in that and ask like, what do you mean by fetching? So if, uh, and I, I'd love to have a conversation with you after, after the call today, but um so right now, no, we're not, we're not automatically going out and fetching invoices to say that we can't build or develop that as we continue to build out our AI platform. Yeah, let's, let's put it on a development uh, roadmap, right? Uh, but right now, we're not doing any fetching if I'm interpreting that correctly. The best practice uh, suggestion would be to get this email domain to that vendor and say, this is where I want all of my invoices because I'm the client I this is where I want all my invoices to go right and I uh, agree with you so one of the things that I've done is you know if I've got my, my electric company if I've got my my materials you know all of those kinds of things I've got a separate email address for those different clients that that were pulling in those those particular bills and it's coming into that email address and you've got one right there that's listed for the Vic AI so that'd be their inbox and so you would just go inside of all of your settings that has automated emails and you would just set it to this default email address to send all those uh, bills. Right, exactly. So that, that would be you know, right. So you might have to take some upfront steps and, and that you could in essence say that that's um, maybe kind of a fetching protocol or option that, you, that you've initiated on your end, right? Yeah, good, good way to look about it. Good way to think about it. Uh, I know we're probably coming upon the hour. We got like about 10 minutes left. So I do want to just transition back to uh, the, the, the PowerPoint and the presentation. I'd, I'd be more than happy to connect with any of your um, members and do a deeper dive into this uh, after the fact. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing. And, I think um, that's great. And while you're doing that, do we want to have a drink toast? Because we have this beautiful drink. Let's yeah, do that. Yeah, let's have Rachel explain what the drink is all about. Yeah. Yeah, so um, for those who might not be uh, familiar, as Todd mentioned earlier, um, our founders are from Norway. Uh, actually, uh, Scandinavia and Norway in particular has a liquor that uh, is commonly known as Aquavit. And if you're in Norway, you're probably drinking the brand Alini. Uh, so it's, uh, it's like a spirit that's produced similarly to gin and vodka, but it's a lot more herbal and earthy in nature. So it allows you to turn kind of like any drink that you would typically make with gin or vodka, you can make with Aquavit. So in this case, um, we recommended a recipe for an AI Negroni, um, take an Aquavit AI Negroni. So uh, it uh, looks kind of exactly like a regular Negroni, um, which is, you know, Campari, um, Lilit, or uh, Vermouth in that case. And then um, also the, the Aquavit itself. So you can always stay traditional and make it with gin, but for those who are a little bit more adventurous, uh, we encourage you to use Aquavit and give something new a try. <laughs> oh, that's nice. amazing. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love it whenever we have new ideas and new yeah. liquors. So I had to go in and actually this one was a new one to me. So, so cheers. 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 And, and to, then, your first, to your first AI Negroni. Exactly. <laughs> We're drinking yeah. virtually. That's right. So somebody mentioned all they have is mezcal. That's that always works for me. So <laughs> not the same. But not the same. <laughs> that is a party. But perfectly acceptable. <laughs> yes. So um, do we want to get the poll up? Because I know that there's lots of different questions that are happening, and some of them I'm able to answer. 
And then Todd, I'll be honest with you, there's some of these that, that I don't know the answers to. So if we put the poll up, that would help us to be able to get these yeah, people that. slotted to you. Okay. Oh, thank okay. you, Heather. Do that on your end, Liz. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so uh, I am launching the poll right now. Fantastic. And Kat said that she's half Swedish. <laughs> oh, and she's probably had aqua meat before. So, uh, anyhow, <laughs> you know. So, does that mean the little Swedish fish are also Swedish? <laughs> Uh, that one I can't comment on. <laughs> I'd have to do my investigation. <laughs> All right, we've got just about 63%, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and count this down and say that if you want to have more um, answers to some of your questions today, um, make sure that you say yes. And those of you who say no, we don't pass along any information, so it's just the ones who say yes. That's right. And also, Liz, I think in the beginning of the sh of the chat, you shared a link, which would also allow anybody who uses that to get in touch with Todd um, as well. Fantastic. Yeah, we have that on a slide, too, coming up in just a minute. I think, Todd, you have a couple more slides. Yeah, a couple more we'll slides. I mean, just, yeah. you know, we always like to give a shout out to some of our uh, partners already. You can obviously we've, see we've had a lot of success in, the, in obviously in the top 10, top 100 space, even mid-market um, public accounting firms there. But then, you know, what we call pure plays and that that's outsource CFO, um, you know, back office, uh, you know, bookkeeping companies uh, that you see at the bottom there. So we're, you know, from, you know, sole proprietors and small firms to very large firms that are obviously having a lot of success and on the forefront of embracing, you know, uh, the, where the technology is actually taking us. Yeah. So I, I do have a kind of a, a use case example here to share out. So if you want to move on to the next slide, I'll just get through this as quickly as possible. But these are some use cases. I mean, you know, I think again, probably a bill.com client where, the, you know, ultimately that, that vendor is getting paid through bill.com would be a great way to get started. Um, we just want to take over the upfront part of the processing. We can handle direct to QBO clients. And then we could also get the other, through other GL applications that you or your clients might be on through apps like bill.com or that export uh, feature of ours. And then I know you guys are all doing after the fact accounts pay when I know that you're processing clients invoices, whether you think you're providing an, an AP service or not, I know you guys are doing it. I've been in, in the industry long enough. <laughs> um, and that's probably, I think the more lab laborious or painstakingly part of the process. Cause I, I would almost guarantee that that is a manual process for you. We'd love to get those invoices into Vic AI and help you with your after the fact accounts payable clients and make you more efficient there. So you could you can move on, sure, Banna. <laughs> <laughs> so look, real quick use case scenario. I mean, again, if we just think about ten minutes of manual time versus what we can reduce down to thirty to forty-five seconds, we're going to save you time, and ultimately, we're going to say say we're going to save you a ton of time, and help you better manage your existing people and your processes, and that's going to give you guys more time back into the day to grow and scale and bring on more clients. And ultimately, we're also going to save save you money. So just a, a a quick use case scenario there, and then we could we could buzz through these pretty quickly. So sure. if you want to move on, Heather, that'll be fine. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to see your automation levels go up, right? So we we know that we might not recognize some um, vendors immediately out of the gate. We know that some of the confidence thresholds and the scoring might come back below a certain percentage, with it, where it does require some human review. Just know that it's going to get smarter and smarter through the machine learning over a longer period of time to the point where some of our firms that you saw in the previous slide are already capturing 80 and 90 percent and a couple of them are getting very close to full automation is ultimately what we're trying to solve for here. You move on. And so here's what a starter program would look like. We would, you know, how do you get started with Vic AI? You know, think about one or two champion Vic AI users within your organization. Think about maybe five to 10 clients that you could put on Vic AI. You know, these would probably be clients with more invoice volume where you'll get a greater return, obviously. Um, but we could, you know, whether it's a client that has 10 or 20 invoices or 500 invoices a month, it doesn't matter. I know you all have clients in various ranges out there, but that might be a way to think about it. And think of this as a pilot or proof of concept. You know, you, again, 
you're going to have to witness what the AI and the automation and the machine learning can do for you in a, a three to four month pilot to see those automation levels go up would be the best way to go about it. And so that's what a starter program would look like. And I think that's it. Uh, aside from any additional questions that your uh, followers might have, I'd be happy to answer as best I can. Yes, absolutely. And so, I mean, thank you for all of the information. Yeah, There's still some questions. Jim is asking, can, what if it's not an open bill? What if it's a receipt? So would it be able to show that there's a payment on that document? So as far as like receipts and expenses, that's our next module and that's going to be our cost processing module. So I don't want to kind of commingle receipts with like invoices from vendors quite yet. Um, but again, we might, that might just be a case by case uh, example that we should talk through. Cause I don't want to say no, that we couldn't um, process it right now. Um, but that sounds more like um, a bank and credit card reconciliation need. And we'll solve that with our cost processing module next, which actually we're, we're, tar we're hoping to release here to market by the end of Q2. So the end of June uh, and pilot start piloting and uh, going live with it by Q3. And again, we're, we're, we're building out an AI platform. So we're going to do this in, in with certain modules and be able to solve for so much more. So I love that question. It's a great question. And I think we're going to be able to solve for that very quickly here. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, we have, I'm going to move on very quickly. This is like three slides, but we have an exciting, coolest thing um, this week. As I was working in one of my clients with my business partner, um, we went in to look at a reconciliation and lo and behold, <laughs> we had bank statements in our reconciliation screen in QuickBooks Online. So this is a very, it looks like a very slow rollout. Uh, I have it in one of my clients in Saturday uh, Training and Consulting. Um, another one of my, uh, one of my colleagues has it in a couple of her clients in another firm. So, um, exciting. I don't know how fast it'll be rolled out to everyone, but this is what it looks like. So when you go in, the re reconciliation screen is kind of offset to the left now, and you have a, the ability to view the statements, um, right here. Um, if there are a few big banks that now actually have the fetch where it's actually pulling the statements in. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are with a smaller bank, you can upload the statements here so that when you're actually reviewing the reconciliations every month, you've got the reconciliation, you've got the statement in one place. It's really exciting. We've been asking about this forever and ever. So we thought that would be the really cool, the coolest thing this month. We're really excited about it. Like I said, I have no... It no information. This was a complete surprise. It was literally like we yeah. working on a client and I'm like, what? Like no idea this was coming. So I was really excited about it and I have no idea what the rollout is or anything else, but I know of at least three clients, two outside my firm that have it. So very exciting. And the Canadians, you have had it for a while. So you guys aren't mm -hmm. excited at all. <laughs> uh, and then this is what it looks like now when you're in the history by account screen, you now have a tab for all the statements for every reconciliation. I That's know, great. it makes us so happy, right? Yeah, we're very, getting a lot of yays. <laughs> lots and lots of yays, so yeah. very cool. So we already did that. Um, this is the link that Liz shared. Liz, maybe you can share it again in the chat. Um, so you can uh, reach on out to uh, Vic AI to, to learn more information. And make sure you visit our website. We'll have this video uploaded definitely by tomorrow. Um, so you can share it with your friends. We'll also be sharing it on social media. If you know somebody that's interested in this, and I can't imagine anybody that wouldn't be interested in this new technology. I mean, this is cutting edge. Um, share it out. Share it. They can go watch on our website. You can share it for, for, uh, via Facebook Live. Send this to YouTube. Um, but this is really great information. Excuse my hey, uh, hey, 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 Heather, real quickly, because I saw yeah. Ross's question. I did, and I, I haven't shared anything about pricing. So retail oh, price sure. is... Uh, uh, so again, we're a SaaS model. So retail price to access our platform is uh, $290 a month, uh, but we do have a promotion in place. It's, uh, it's, so what we are offering is $199 uh, platform price, and oh, wow. it includes your first 100 transactions. Uh, and then anything beyond your first 100 transactions would basically be a dollar per transaction. So... Um, that that's um, your so now you have our retail price and you have our promo and um, you know if you have a 
a client or a few clients with 100 invoices and you want to get started, we'd love to have a further conversation with you. Fantastic. Thank you so much um, for joining us, Todd. Uh, our next session is on May 26th. Uh, we have our friend Matthew Fulton joining us. He's going to be doing a deep dive into uh, ADP uh, Account and Connect. So again, huge thank you to you, Todd. I'm so happy that you came on. This was amazing. I learned a ton and I'm really excited um, to see Vic AI evolve and kind of automate all of it. So very excited. And thank you, Rachel, for joining us as well. Oh, thanks for having us, guys. Really a lot of fun. And yes, congratulations you. on your uh, close to two years. Is that what you said? <laughs> Next month, it'll be two years. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, maybe in another two years, we'll have to come back on and give you an update of where uh, AI has taken us. We'd love well, to definitely. hear that. Sounds like yeah. a plan. Definitely. <laughs> where it's evolved, definitely. Well, everybody stay safe and thanks for joining us. And we will see you all soon. Be thanks well. so much. Wash Bye, your hands. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>